And the last and third point I want to share before I conclude is that we will only become a respectful and dignified nation once again is if we live by the principles and code of conduct of our religion. And I will share and conclude with this one story that I believe epitomizes it. During the time of Umar ibn Khattab anhu, there were two men who brought in a young boy dragging into the courthouse. So Umar ibn Khattab anhu, he asked him, what is this? What is going on? Why are you dragging him into the courthouse? They say, this boy, he killed our father. Umar ibn Khattab, he asks him, did you really kill their father? The boy says, yes, I did kill their father, but it was by accident. My camel, it used to tread on their property. So one day, their father took a rock and hit the camel in the eye. And I saw the camel suffering, and it made me furious and aggravated. So I took a rock and I threw it at the father. It hit him in the head and he died. So Umar ibn Khattab he asks the, the two brothers, Will you forgive this young boy for this accident? They say, no, we want kasas, we want retribution. So Umar ibn Khattab anhu, he asked the young boy, do you have any last words, any last wishes, any last requests? And the young boy says, yes, my father passed away and I have a younger brother. And my father left some money behind for my younger brother. I would like three days to go and retrieve this wealth in the, from a hidden place so that I can make sure my brother gets it when I die and pass away. So Umar ibn Khattab, he thinks this boy is making up the story. He's like, boy, what are you talking about? What wealth, what father, what young brother? The young boy, he says, trust me. Umar ibn Khattab, he says, okay, I will trust you, but find a guarantor for you. Someone who will guarantee that you will come back. The young boy, he looks around, there's a packed courthouse. Will someone not help me today? And everyone, as the boys looking around, they turn their face away, they turn their faces down. No one wants to help this boy. Then from the back of the courthouse, a hand raises up. Whose hand is it? Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu. The noble and illustrious companion who gave da'wah to so many of the tribes. He says, I will be the guarantor of this boy. Now understand what it means to be the guarantor. Meaning that if this boy does not come back, it is the head of Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu that will be chopped off, that he will be killed. Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, he says, I will be the guarantor. So the boy goes away. The first day goes by, the boy is nowhere to be seen. The second day goes by, the boy is still nowhere to be seen. Asr time comes on the third day. The two brothers go to Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu and they say, come with us to the courthouse. It is time. Abu Dhar al-Ghifari says, I will come to the courthouse, but the day does not end until Maghrib. So now Abu Dhar al-Ghifari is walking through Medina with these two brothers. They're going to the courthouse. And the people of Medina are following behind them. All getting to the courthouse to see what is going to happen. It is now the talk of the town. You can imagine, minutes are going by, the courthouse is filling up. The anxiety is building up. Will Abu Dhar al-Ghifari have his life sacrificed for the mistake of a boy? And literally minutes before the Adhan of Salat al-Maghrib, the boy rushes in. People are now shouting, they're you know, happy, they're wondering what's going to happen, you know, will everyone be forgiven, will everyone be happy, what's going to happen? So the boy comes in, the Adhan for Maghrib hasn't gone. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he asks the boy, Oh boy, why did you come back? I did not send a spy behind you. I did not send anyone to follow you. What made you come back? He said that I did not want anyone to say that a Muslim gave his word and did not fulfill it. So I came back. Umar ibn Khattab, he turns to Abu Dhar and he says, Oh Abu Dhar, what made you want to be the guarantor of this boy? He says, I saw a Muslim in need and he did not want anyone to ever say that a Muslim was in need and no one was there to help him. So I raised my hand to be his guarantor. The two brothers, they say when we have people like this, how can a Muslim ask for forgiveness and no one be there to forgive him? So they forgave the boy and the boy was forgiven.
This was the legacy of Islam. This was the code of conduct. This is why during the Khilaf of Umar ibn Khattab, they were able to reach the border of China all the way to the south of France. Because they had strong relationships with Allah. They did things with Ihsan and they lived with the code of conduct of Islam. And this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will restore the Izzah of this nation and will make us once again proud of the great legacies that have been left behind in hopes that one day we will be called a great legacy. My dear brothers and sisters, it is a time where we need to stand up and begin with changing ourselves and becoming proud of who we are as Muslims. Believers in Allah, worshippers of Allah, followers of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, reciters of the Qur'an, people who pray five times a day, and they do it with honor, dignity, and respect. I pray that Allah purifies our hearts and cleanses them. And fills them with